and you're welcome back to morning express now as we look to establish discussions on the program this morning following the recent forced scarcity that is returning to the country a statement has been released by the nnpcl regarding financial restraints that is causing a ripple effect in the fuel supply in the country now as it greets your screen i will uh, take uh, details of the publication or press release by the nnpcl and it reads nnpcl limited faces financial strain due to pms supply costs impacting supply sustainability nnpc limited has acknowledged recent reports in national newspapers regarding the company's significant debt to petrol suppliers this financial strain has placed considerable pressure on the company and poses a threat to the sustainability of fuel supply in line with the petroleum industry act pia nnpcl remains committed and dedicated to its role as the supplier of last resort ensuring national energy security we are actively collaborating with relevant government agencies and other stakeholders to maintain a consistent supply of petroleum products nationwide now this is a press release coming in from olufemi sonaye who is the chief corporate communications officer at nnpc limited and now we're being joined by honorable desmond olari waju forby who will be giving us his thoughts as to these uh, developing national issues of concern hello and good morning honorable desmond uh, good morning gentlemen it's a pleasure to be in the studio with you well, and more importantly that we are going to be looking at some of the issues that is grazing our national dailies it is a pleasure once again to be here certainly now there's a lot of timelines in question whilst a lot of persons are looking forward to the end of this month september and probably october to see a pms from dangote refinery at the moment nigeria is somewhat stranded lingering fuel skews across filling stations now the nnpcl has come out openly to accept some of the publications made last week over the level of indebtedness to petrol marketers what do you make of this development uh Beto, you know when you pick the nigerian paper especially if you're a patriotic nigeria you find out that some of the developing stories that grazed our papers is that that is so disheartening unfortunate and beats all understanding especially if you're a patriotic citizen uh, you know it's not a green eye on the other side like if you look at what is happening and if you just oppose with the news that graced our papers every day is a major concern it is a major issue to some of us it gives us sleepless nights as if we could just do magic this is not a good story since march we've been having lingering for scarcity across the federation and yet we are still battling with understanding the cause of this scarcity and when you don't understand that means solution is still far Nigerian forest scarcity is not something that we can resolve now, tomorrow, because the government are not even being sincere with the people. It now looks as if this is like a mirage. It is something that requires rocket science. It's something that cannot be solved, or is like maybe there are some forces. I understand, you know, social issue like this. Why we have some people that is on the path of good? Some people are on the path of destruction. It is only going to be easy when everybody are on the same page. In this country, Nigeria, we have seen individuals that, are, that their interest is overriding over the world, over the national interest. There are a lot of people who don't care as long as money keeps rolling into their personal account. They don't care about coming to solve this problem. Do you know? As some Nigerians are going over for scarcity, which has affected lives, which has affected the standard and the quality of lives of a common Nigerians, there are some Nigerians that are benefiting from this scarcity, and those Nigerians, because of their selfish interest, will never pray for any breakthrough. While we may identify some mechanical issues, 
like logistics and other things that the Sunoye has talked about. There are more issues that is even making this situation difficult to resolve, and that is unpatriotic, unpatriotic citizens are, are contributing to this and other things. These are more difficult issue than the logistic issue. It is only when we do not have people who are sabotaging efforts of government yes. that we can have a smooth ride in solving this problem. I'm a student of conflict, and I understand that even when conflict is contracted, when conflict is complex, we still develop a means of what? Managing why we focus on the long-term transformation of that conflict. Yes, I understand that it's not every conflict that can be resolved. But there are some conflicts that you can manage to achieve some level playing ground and peace. But it is not playing out right now because we do not even understand who is the Nigerian citizen, the Nigerian government fighting with over at the this moment. at the moment over this issue of petroleum. Is the government fighting against itself? Government fighting against the people? Government fighting against the nationals, the multinationals. We don't understand the problem. What Nigerians know is this, we have crude, we have refineries, for that matter, we have four refineries. That are not working. That are not working. Yes. I don't know whether they are working or they are not working. Well, well, well we, we have to stay the Nigerian government has are. spent over 20 trillion in the last 12 years for overall maintenance. Of these refineries. Melekiari, who happens to be GMD of NMPC, has been there for nine good years. And he has promised Nigerians, he set, he set the deadline and those dates come and go and nothing happens and nobody could question them. And now there is a new deadline. And now there is a fake deadline that will not materialize. I don't wish my country that. I don't wish my country that. It is a negative connotation. I'm a patriotic citizen. But, it, I is, want but, the best. but it, is a, it is a repetitive event that has happened over and that over again. Over and over because they do not care about the yearnings and aspiration of the people. See, it is unimaginable and it beats all human comprehension, logic, and moral standard and ethics. Any how you want to put it or even believe that you set a date after you have a negotiation with somebody to fix something for you. Paid. Give them ample of time, opportunity to fix that stuff. And then they come back to you without a solution and you keep on spending n billions of... L let, me, let me take you back, Honorable Desmond. You, you said that since March, the country has been experiencing an on and off of full scarcity. Yes. And right now, there is a bigger crisis looming, according to the NNPC itself, due to a debt of about $6.8 billion it's so to suppliers. So pathetic. How did we get to the point Thank where NNPCL is owing suppliers this humongous amount of money? Uh, the Minister of Petroleum, the Minister State of Petroleum, NMPC GMD, GMD and every other stakeholders needs to come to a round table. It could be via Skype. It could be via Zoom. But there has to be a round table discussion where the Nigerian people and experts... I, I believe this is an experts, emergency that calls experts, for a physical experts, meeting. Experts, we need to ask certain questions. How did we get here? That is the question. Nigerians are not getting for free. We paid. And Nigerians even pay more. You know, when you're doing business, there are people who do business. They import things into Nigeria. Yes. Sell, make money, and still go back and I'm import more. And they are making so much profit, building mansion in Nigeria. NMPC, thank God, they, they had L limited to it. And that's one of the reasons why they need to be, they, they need to be on stock exchange. Now, as a business venture, if not because of lack of sincerity, most of the statement and most of the information the government is giving to the people are not true. We have the crude for Christ's sake, and we get money from the crude, from the sales of crude. That is one. We get money from licenses. 
we get money from the sale of other byproducts we get money from what from exploration we get money from the sale of pms ago even gas at even exorbitant rates where is this money going into those are the questions now we are buying for a 200 and something era before 197 era before now nigerians are buying for officially 850 750 in different part of nigeria so we are buying times three that means the country is more richer in terms of uh, revenue, accrued. revenue accrued from the sales of pms where is this money going to and we are told some weeks ago that nmpc is still the major importer of pms into the country that means mmpc under tunubu is richer far richer than mmpc under buari and jonathan and, and, and yet they are they are and they are, yet they are, the, the they are so deaths. they are indebted that is to tell you that there are certain information they are concealing to themselves which would do them a lot of good because let's understand that the country is in serious economic crisis what, what, and declare a state of emergency in our economic sector what, what, hold on, but this one, I, I now more that dangers that. are looming more dangers are coming okay now that multinationals that are in the offshores they're already selling off their shares selling off their they are taking off their hand off nigerian crude because the whole world is moving away from fossil fuel to more renewable energy greener energy so Nigeria, we are still battling with managing the fuel. Let now, when these people are no more there, there is going to be more crisis for Nigeria because we do not even have enough investment to put into that. Have you heard that it's the last time we were able to to explore to maximum is two thousand and five? From year two thousand and five till date, Nigeria has been grappling between one thousand six hundred per barrel, one thousand eight hundred fifty, and now it is worse. It is even worse now due to the activities of theft now now there's a, a call from the senior advocate of nigeria mr femi falana who has called it an outright scam talking about the need for an investigation into nigeria's petroleum importation now the challenges with getting persons to even honor summons as issued by the national assembly particularly in the handling of our natural resources in the country how do you think that this purported scam of subsidy which is gone and now in the words of mr femi falana sen petrol importation is a scam how does this investigation birth genuity in plugging these loopholes and persons who benefit the most from our commonwealth Vito, mr femi falano sen is not very far from truth that the petrol importation is a scam it is not a scam but there is a lot of scam around it and uh, the national assembly we have the constitutional right to save the country. They have the power to do what they call oversight, though they are not executives, but they have the constitutional power to call the executives to order. But they are losing that power due to what? Corruption. We see them issue summons on persons upright. Due to corruption. Defy the due orders. to corruption. See, the biggest institution when it comes to democracy is the people's assembly the national assembly because that is where you have people representation people government imposing people you have there as elected representatives from different constituency and senatorial districts in different states of the country are there as a messenger are there to represent the wills and caprices of the nigerian people now they have the right to call for investigation of any manhandling misappropriation corruption or any allegation they have the right to oversight and there is no boundary there is nothing that can stop them from getting what they want to get but look at what is happening when national assembly who is saddled with the responsibility of ensuring that there is probity there is transparency now involve themselves in collecting Ghana must go doing oversight functions collecting brown envelopes stuck with dollars from oversight function tell me are they going to represent the interests of the Nigerian people or they will do the biddings of those who are paying them extra fees
despite the Omogos goose money they take home every month. That is to tell you that until we have the right people to represent Nigeria at different level of, in of influence, this country will not move forward. Now, the issue of this debt, listening to the comments made by the NNPCL, they say it's not news that suppliers supply on credit. And once the supply is done, they refund this monies. Now, in business, people understand that it is almost a norm. But when you allow the money accrue to the point that the suppliers are refusing to supply over fear of recouping the monies that have already accrued to $6.8 billion, how do we solve this challenge in our supply chain? Because before now, there were different excuses made. They said it was logistics. They blamed the rain. They blamed the state of the road before this true position was now made known in the press release as issued by the NNPCL. Now, the opposition voice in Alhaji Atiku is saying that the NNPCL be listed in the stock exchange market. Do you think this would solve the issue of the indebtedness of the NNPCL to suppliers? Pito, when you sweep the debt under the carpet, it will only take a while before you would understand that you are doing yourself a lot of disservice by not sweeping out outrightly the debt from your home. What does that mean? It means that you get more revelation as the situation will get out of control. More. There are more revelation that Nigerians will get. You get a lot of shockers. What you heard is just like a tip of the iceberg. More revelations will come. You know, I said it many months ago in this studio. That the government are not sincere with the people. Give the Nigerians people, the Nigerian people, the clear state of affairs so that we will know how to help. So by listing it in the stock market, we can it's not the strength of the that shares. That is of... not the even the problem. Now, six point eight billion. How much is the true uh, money that the NMPC is owing suppliers? Uh, suppliers? That is not the true amount. So that why, 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 why do you think so? Why do you think so? You know, this country. If you have done supply to government office before, you know that most times. The actual price of what you are getting could be 10 era. But what the government is paying for that thing is 13 era. 10 era go back to them, the person who award that contract. That money may not be up to that, but certainly there are some power that be that is handling or managing the affairs of the NMPC supply and all that. Yeah, so have their own share. Procurement has always been one of the biggest issues with corruption in government institutions that reports let me tell you there are more to these figures there are some nigerians like i said earlier that are benefiting hugely from this crisis the fact that a lot of nigerians are going through pains they don't care well honorable desmond let's look at it from an economic point of mm. view already nigerians are faced with so much hardship Mm. Uh, motorists can't get around taxi mm. drivers for instance mm. are hiking up their prices people who use generators who in turn use fuels uh, or fuel for their uh, for running of their businesses or their offices are hiking up the prices of their goods or services and now we are seeing another looming crisis as rightly mentioned by the nnpcl what's economic um repercussions will these particular statements have because already i can envision four queues in town as it stands right now i mean once you work. once you leave this place There's i believe queue. it's it's already eminent that there are four queues in all over the place so what economic downturn will this cause in the country as a matter of fact since the announcement of uh subsidy suspension by uh, the president ashua jibola in may 29 last year yeah Till date, I tell you that life in Nigeria has not been the same. Every day you see the cost of um, uh, price increase, you know, abruptly, some to maybe three hundred percent increment within two days, four hundred percent increment inflation in four five days in just a week. It is alarming. Now, and this has affected the economy. This has affected life. This have affected the sales, buying and uh, selling and buying, buying and selling for over how many months? And then 
there, it has not changed. Nothing has changed since the coming of President Bola Ahmed Tunumbu. I was one of the young people, one of the voices in Nigeria who have advocated that Nigerians need to give this government time. But what is more frustrating right now is that it seems that the government is lost on ideas on how to recover the economy. I mean, if, let if, me if, tell they you, were, if they were viable ideas, now, let me tell a, you, a little over a year now, we should have been seeing, been seeing some see, sort of results. I am not one of those people who expect magic, but I expect sincerity, and I expect progress, and I expect consistency. For me, so far so good. I have not seen any sign of seriousness. Now, I'm not saying I'm not getting results. I'm not asking for that now. But I'm not seeing any form of seriousness exhibited by this current government of Achiwajibo Lame Tunumbu. It's so painful. Because we advocated to Nigerians to give this government time. Now, just to give the Nigerian people the right information as, at, as pertaining for is a big deal. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. Not only that, do you know that I'm telling see, government is just making effort, fruitless effort that is not going anywhere. Now, honorable, because, honorable Desmond, I, I might have to hold you there. I like mm. what you said that mm. the government and stakeholders in the oil sector are not really telling Nigerians the truth. And this also sort of goes in line with this recent statement by the NNPCL. Now, I'm going to paraphrase um, a, a certain section of this press release. In line with the Petroleum Industry Act, uh, NNPCL Limited remains dedicated to its role as the supplier of last resort. Take note of this. Ensuring national energy security. We are actively collaborating with relevant government agencies and other stakeholders to maintain a consistent supply of petroleum products nationwide. The petrol supply is inconsistent. It has not been consistent in the last six months. Why do we keep getting lights from the NNPCL? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. That insincerity by the people who are saddled with the responsibility of overseeing the affairs of the NNPC from the minister, the minister state of petroleum, the GMD and other sister agencies. The truth must be told. First thing first, now, what they have accrued or what they have attributed the cost of fuel scarcity to initially is inflation, is a uh, um, rate, dollar rate. Doll FX rate, yes. FX rate. And ah, landing costs, as which affected landing costs. Yes. Now, as a serious government, what stops this government? from refining at least let's say 30 percent of its oil daily consumption from the potato to refinery worry refineries are you um Shijuke, do yes. you believe sincerely that our refineries are not working well do you believe uh, they are not working that, 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 that that's a question that i might i might have to do you believe <laughs> that these fuels are not being refined and secretly exported out of this country to some that other is a countries? possibility <laughs> But do you know what it means to spend 20 trillion? Do you know what do you know what it means? Let's say problem. let Nigeria get something. Do you know what it means to spend 20 trillion? Do you know what is trillion? Hold on, honorable. Not to build a refinery. Now to, then to maintain a refinery and yet it's not working. And you think the government is stupid we've to keep quiet. The motor. Do you think the government is stupid? We're the government is not saying and they just kept quiet. No. We're Something we're is fishing. Hold on, hold on. Federal hold on. government need to sell off completely. The NMPC. Hold on, honorable. Take their hand off it. Call some technocrats. So call some expert to come and manage our fuel. We cannot be the way they are. Because the, power the majority of the people who are handling this, they are too corrupt. Honorable, hold on, hold on. Nigerians, our viewers, and everyone following the program mm. is well aware of these challenges we're facing. Now, many have talked about the need for a strong opposition, one that would not criticize government alone, but also offer solutions. Now, in this transparency with the allegations flying, even with the Malta refinery activities that was also made public on certain publications, many are saying, how do Nigerians uncover some of these secrets if they are not there in the open? Now, I'll refer to my other question again. Atiku Abu Bakr has said that the NNPCL, since it is a limited liability, be listed on the Nigerian stock market exchange earning. Do you think this is one of the ways if persons 
buy shares and follow the activities of NNPCL, there'll be little room for some of the hidden or secret agendas as people continue to speculate. You see, first of all, government have no business in business, but the biggest business in Nigeria is the NNPC because it's the life wire of the nation's economy. I understand their conservative conservativeness as regards leasing the NNPC out completely to people. But then, you see the faces that manages, why is Melikiari still the GMD of NNPC? Why? So you think if not for the gross inadequacies, they need to it, have the gross it. incompetencies and inadequacy and lies. So at this point, you think an overhaul of the NNPCL is needed? If I am the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria today, the first person I'll put in jail is Melikari. It, it has to be tried. He has to go through prosecution if he's found yes. guilty. And he, he must, he's he already is guilty. He's guilty. Until guilty, until guilty, guilty. 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 He's guilty for telling Nigeria lies. Listen. No, no, no. no, 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 no I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm a diplomatic person. I'm a diplomat. I'm not. I'm not. I can't come to the media and talk. Carry on, carry on. Now, this is on the basis that I'm going to put him in, in custody. One, promising Nigerians that by June 2023, our refineries, at least three of them, will be working efficiently. He be dead for money. He be there the National Assembly to give him certain amount of money for overall maintenance. And the government did give him the homogeneous amount of money that is enough to build new refineries. And at the end of the day, he cannot deliver. That is a breach now, of contact. Now, now, hold on. We'll, we'll take a short break. And when we return, we'll turn our attention to more issues on the news this morning. A heated conversation as it is in our studio. But remember, it's about objectivity to the discourse. We also do remind you that the headlines are only read as published under the guidelines of the various newspapers and are not a position of ADB and television as it concerns these issues in the news. We also do advise that when you join in to make your comments and observations, we refrain from using inflammatory statements or inciting comments as we look to objectively contribute to issues of national concern. We'll be back with more issues in the news. Please stay with us. And you're welcome back to Morning Express. Now, in continuing our discussion on the newspaper review segment, President Bola Ametinubu has declared outright war on banditry and terrorism in the northern parts of the country as he has ordered service chiefs to relocate to Sokoto in order to head on fight the insecurity in that region. Also, uh, northern chiefs as well as southern elders are disagreeing on the new constitution that has been uh, proposed nationwide. Now, these stories are captured on a few publications as we look to broaden the scope of the discussion let's uh, still review them a little bit uh, as we continue now on the front page of the new telegraph newspaper as well as the blueprint newspaper you'd find the story surrounding orders of the president to military chiefs now on the new telegraph newspaper you'd find the headline story tinubu declares war on bandits orders military chiefs to relocate to sokoto residents celebrate president's directive and crossing over to the blueprint newspaper you'd find on the front page of the blueprint the headline story the catchphrase splashed in red terrorism in south in northwest federal government's order to cds others excites sokoto katsina residents arewa youth back move naf kills kingpin mustafa abdullahi five others in kaduna and ACF calls for Nigeria, Niger Republic, renewed ties. Crossing over to uh, the leadership newspaper uh, to get an overview of the disagreement between Northern and Southern elders uh, on the new constitution. It reads, Northern and Southern elders disagree over new constitution. Straplines say, Afeniferi or Hanese, Middle Belt wants new constitution and ACF, Pandef, seek amendment power sharing. Well, that being said, coming back to the studio now, back to you, Honorable Desmond. Firstly, uh, let me get your take on the president's very, very stringent order to military chiefs, as well as the Minister of State for Defense, uh, Alhaji Bello Matawali, to move to Sokoto 
the first time a sitting president is asking service chiefs to relocate to a certain region of the country in order to end the insecurity there um shijuke is not the first time uh we have uh, seen uh in 20 uh for uh, 2015 2016 during the era of uh president muhammadu buhari yes when the issue of boko haram ravaged yes the northeastern part of the country they were deployment they were deployment then i could remember oh, service chiefs service chiefs yes. relocated the headquarters defense to, headquarters to my degree to, to my degree, degree. yes so, certainly, certainly certainly now it is a good thing uh although i don't know why it took the president this long before he could make that pronouncement or order uh if you look at what has been happening since last year in the northwest it beats every, anyone's understanding why do region uh that had been peaceful suddenly became the horn of nigeria you know it seems like these bandits this group of people yes who are destabilizing this country they have the freedom of movement from one region to another region that means we are not actually destabilizing this, this group what we are doing is that we are making a particular group a particular zone unbearable for them and then they move to another and they move to another region so the country need to look at the security architecture and try to identify who are these people the national intelligence agency national security advisor office of the D director civil uh secret services dss yes, directorate of the secret, secret services, services yes. inspector general of police the civil defense and every other agencies involved that is manned with the responsibility of safeguarding and protecting lives and security of properties in this country we need to do more than conventional warfare we need to do more of intelligence we need to do more of negotiation because for every conflict there is interest and there are actors could it be that we have not been able to identify the actors or the interest well i do not the believe first, that if the I, first thing yeah. you need to do when you want to resolve a conflict is to identify what are the interests who are the actors the interest can also be a pointer to the actors it could be within the country it could be outside the country but the point is this um it is good i want to commend the president of the federal republic of nigeria for the move and i, I heard Meta uh, Bello metawali you know the minister of state of uh, defense, defense yeah. you know making that call relocating them to sokoto precisely and by extension they should also kb because kb and some other states that is surrounding that environment because they have been ravaged by banditry kidnapping and who are these people they are not faceless and our intelligence needs to work more we need to start deploying technology why we appreciate the man the act the activities and the efforts that is being put in place by our security guys our military men our soldiers our naval officers our air force officers we also need to start taking advantage of technology we need to start using areas uh, drones that to see what is happening because it will be easier to nip this in the boot when you know where these people are coming from and where is their safe haven and it is be beyond that warfare we also need to do more of intelligence and engagement we need to resolve insecurity in nigeria and we cannot do that by combat war now, now we can now, only now, achieve I, that through understanding these people knowing these people and negotiating with these people i i remember during the height of the boko Haram insurgency in the northeastern part of the country when um lieutenant general took over you know moved to uh Burno state and it was sort of like a morale booster yes. for the soldiers on ground there and to a certain extent it helped to significantly stem down the strong grip of the terrorists on uh residents within that particular region do you think that perhaps this move would be yet another morale booster for soldiers already sent to the northwestern part of the country to stem the Shijuki. banditry there Shijuki. let's let's look beyond destabilizing 
and taking them off their strong greed of these locals. Look at what happened afterwards. When Buratai yes. went to Shibok, went to uh, motivate the men, the soldiers, yes, he gave them a moral booster. They combat and they confront the war with all patriotism and they, they neutralize these people. But what happened afterwards? You saw, we saw these people leaving Shibok, leaving Northeast and spreading to the North Central spreading to the, to north the northwest and, we, and which is what in, we now know as banditry that in that does not in any way relate or translates into solving insecurity in nigeria what that meant is that you have been able to successfully disperse them from the northeastern part of nigeria to other, to other part parts. of the country especially Safara the other time about three, four, five years ago, yes. they moved to Sanfara. That is not west. They now moved to Kaduna. That was where they started attacking people from different in, 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 areas and localities. Yeah. You disbanded them. You did not disarm them. And neutralize them. And neutralize them. And that is why I said combat will not help Nigeria at this time because you need to understand what is happening in Nigeria. This is not just a case of genuine conflicts or violent conflict or act of banditry or terrorism there are some people who are now seeing it as a venture that is it a lot of nigerian youths are now being recruited from the back door into this banditry some into kidnapping we even saw some innocent young people that are now involved in kidnapping because they now saw it as a what a venture economic and a lucrative business for that matter so we need to understand what is happening right now. There is those who are prosecu prosecuting this conflict for a reason, which I don't know. Some are prosecuting for a reason I know, which is economic re uh, um, reason. reasons. Yes. Because of the level of unemployment in Nigeria. And you know, like I used to say, that energy cannot be conserved. Energy is meant to what? To be used for productive venture. And these young people, because of poverty, and some people have promised them heaven on earth if only they can be part of this organized crime and they are making so much money for me so that's why we need to be careful as we are looking towards prosecuting this war for so that it will not be declared genocide against your people so what i think is wise for the government to do is not just to move people to move our military guys and uh, nigerian against nigerians because at the end of the day you're still going to be interfacing with some nigerians who are now deviants and let and uh, move into banditry kidnapping and all that so we need to as i'm just speaking as a conflict person now for us to overcome insecurity in nigeria we need to put certain factors into consideration one we need to look at opportunities how we can create more opportunity for young people yeah apart from that we need to start engaging with some sec within this country we need we know these people if you go to some localities if you come to my village, we know the bad guys, we know the good guys. Now, the bad guys may not be the kingpin, but they can be a pointer to the kingpin. So the for, intelligence, for negotiations. the national intelligence, the national security advisor, the office of the director of state uh, security yes. need to do more into what they call intelligence gathering and what they call community policing. We need to understand that poverty Unemployment is the reason why some people are into kidnapping and bad. Now, Honorable Desmond, I like how diplomatic you are trying to be with this issue, calling for negotiations, calling for uh, a more softer approach to ending the scourge of banditry and insecurity in the Northwest. But let's take a look at the Boko Haram insurgency as a case study where the government sort of pardoned some, in quote, repentant Boko Haram members rehabilitated them reintegrated them back into the society only for them to start having pockets of uprising here and there people who were you know rehabilitated and sent back to their communities sprang up again and started killing people in these communities which was a failed attempt at curling the insurgency if you ask me if the government should adopt such strategy with the bandits 
don't you think we will see the same results considering that both banditry and the Boko Haram insurgency are all considered terrorism? Actually, JK, you're not following the trend of, of this security issue in Nigeria. You know, when Jonathan was there in 2012, there about that was the introduction. Then there are some names you hear that time. You hear the name of Ali Modu Sheriff. Ali Modu you hear Sheriff. the name of Shetima. Exactly. You hear certain names. As you as as alleged, you hear as alleged, as alleged. You hear certain names. Even the government, as at that time, will tell you that there are some people that are ganging up against this government opposition just to take power. That there are some names, even in the course of electionary and you know politicians. There are some allegations that, that was moving. close to being true that these people are being moved into this country. You understand from Ninja, from Shad, just because they want to make the country ungovernable for Jonathan as a strategy as at that time to get to power. You hear that story that year? Certainly, I, I now, do remember. Now, beyond that time, Hellfire has come out plainly that this Fulani men that are killing people in Nigeria they are not the full they are not the Nigerian Fulanis that these people are from neighboring countries sub-Saharan Africa. Africans now that means some people give them some invitation into the country and give them place places because it is very difficult for a lizard to penetrate your house if there is no crack on the wall that is there is a proverb in Yoruba that that if somebody in the house did not kill you or attempt to kill you the person outside may not succeed in killing you. Now, we need to understand that these issues, there are genuine people, and those names that you hear, so when you are negotiating with bandits, you don't negotiate with those boys, those foot soldiers. You negotiate with their financiers. Who are their sponsors? Who are the names that have been connected in one way or the other to these activities of this insurgency and Boko Haram? Those are the people you negotiate with. Those are the people you talk terms of what amnesty with. It is not those boys. Because some people certainly help these guys to import ammunition into this country. That is one. Some people help these guys to so settle in a particular environment. So it is all collaborative effort between some people within the country and some these gorilla these fighters. So what I think the government needs to do right now is that let's track who are the sponsors of these guys you know initially they were not collecting ransom they were not interested in ransom it is because government makes certain effort that time to monitor their their finance uh their you know there was there are some names somebody uh, if i check my archive yes there are some list of names that these are the sponsors of Bukhara that were published and nothing happened from that time till now the government diplomatically we solve it from the back door and sweep it under the carpet. I mean, the, the, and that, that is the reason. That is the reason. So giving amnesty to giving amnesty to Boko Haram is a very good thing that happens anywhere in the world. But do you know why it's not translating into resort in Nigeria? Why so? Because the sponsors. You are not talking to the. You have not identified the real Boko Haram. But a, a, lot, a lot of people would argue that instead of treating these insurgents with baby blows, mm. that the government ought to meet them with more firepower. Mm. And, and and an iron fist which will help in quelling it. Maybe you don't agree, but this is this know that I believe the opinion it, of you know that it's of better now before. What is more, more worrisome than when somebody puts bomb in his stomach and ready to blast? We are talking about people that have been brainwashed, people that are willing to die because they have nothing to lose. They have no family, no hope of so tomorrow, no hope of, of survivor no children nothing is motivating them no hope for them so they are only ready to die and rest in peace now let me tell you those kind of people you need a more serious approach to resolving the issue what i'm telling you is that i'm not saying the government is not doing enough but i'm saying that the government needs to be sincere in the war in prosecuting this war and it is not just by by fighting and killing the innocent nigerians whether you like it or not while we may claim that some of them are imported into this country, some Nigerians are also part of this banditry work. So what government needs to do, while you are making effort to make life easier and better, Nigerian government needs to do more intelligence gathering to identify who are the sponsors. How do this ammunition get into the country? How do custom, who cleared these arms, uh, firearms, these small arms and light this small wep light weapon and ammunition by custom how do they get into the country 
who order for this thing? How do they get to the hand users? Intelligence gathering. We help you solve that. Apart from that, apart from that intelligence gathering. Now look at these people. Some have been arrested. What is government doing to see that these people provide the right information that can help to trace to trace to the sponsor of this book? That is where the big tax is. It's not by moving to Sokoto to this band. Do you know that as I speak to you right now, banditry kidnapping is not just in Sokoto or Northeast. It's in different part of Nigeria, even Abuja. Did you know that about three weeks ago in some part of Kubwa, these guys went there and kidnapped some people out of their homes and nobody is reporting it now, now in closing we have like just two more minutes before we take our next commercial break the role of social media and technology like you call for has been questioned again and it's following an event that went viral yesterday bello tuji a former bandit kingpin was seen on social media celebrating that he had taken over in nigerian military armored car we also saw bandits flaunting cash they received as ransom on tiktok in that stead how much can the DSS deploying technology apprehend such persons who come back on social media who still have IP addresses from which they post some yes, of their, yes. their, their, their escapades as yes. bandits. You know, by the time people understand technology and the power of technology, there are certain discussions we'll not be having on television or on radio. This is that now looks like a spiritual problem, like something that we cannot resolve. There are something that we can actually resolve. Like rightly said, how many people understand the what you just meant by IP address? IP address means your house address, your location address, where you are chatting from. And that's sometimes when you pair your two systems together and you want to unlock one, it will tell you that there is a particular uh, uh, device. device close to social place on your own phone without even a stronger technology, yes. giving you certain information about somebody has tried to open your Facebook from from Cele, from Celebega in Lagos. Somebody has tried if you are the one. It will, it will give you the information and that is to tell you how Nigerian government and the Nigerian security architecture manages or interact with this technology. This technology, and I know they have advanced technology, and that's why there is this saying that if insurgency or criminality or this thing lasts in your country for more than 25 hours, 24 hours that some people in position of authority have hand in it somebody attributed that statement to abasha then but the point is this if government of the country is given the motivation like the people the security architectures they are given the motivation they are given all the charge i tell you if the nigerian police want to work they really know how to work do you know that there is no same country in the world where a kingpin will go on social media and pick his or her phone or device and say, look at how American gone down Barack Obama. Despite the fact that he was not even Osama bin Laden. Osama bin Laden. Osama bin Laden. Barack Obama gone down Osama bin Laden. You know, he was not even posting. You know what they did? When they record in Gaza, they will go to another state to go and upload the video and post. They don't do live. But this time around, you see bandits posting live videos. That is to tell you that there is a police close to. There is a DSA that can actually get that person if we are working collaboratively that want to solve the issue of insecurity in Nigeria. And I tell you, Nigerians need to be patriotic. Every Nigerian needs to understand that no matter how much money you're making right now for yourself, if you don't consider others, that money would go to a level where it cannot save you or protect you from security. Oh, all right. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Desmond. Olaren Waju for B for coming on the program and sharing your thoughts with us. Uh, the pleasure is mine. It's always a pleasure.